I'm Aria Schwartz along with Rachel Galligan and Ben Dull, and welcome to the Windsider Show where it's all about the W. Free agency has been full of more movement and action than we've ever seen in the league before. Now it's time to judge the moves that have been made. our show please consider joining our patreon community patreon.com backslash windsider for less than a cup of coffee a month you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the w and don't forget to see our staff's amazing written content over at windsider.com that's windsider.com while you're over there check out our overseas tracker it's live now you can see where all your favorite WNBA players are playing overseas all in one place and make sure to keep up to date with all the free agency moves with our free agency tracker on winsider.com and a hat tip to Ben Dole. Ben, Rachel, it's been a while since all three of us have been on a pod. It's it's great to be back in the swing of things. Let's start it off. Rachel, how you been? I'm doing well. I'm happy to be back in here with you guys chit-chatting uh, now that, I mean, not, not to say that free agency is completely done. We all know that a lot more could still happen, but I think we all can agree that the majority um, of, of the bulk of moves have taken place. So now we get to kind of jump on here and chit chat about it. I'm excited to see everybody's thoughts. Uh, shout out to Ben. I think you've done a phenomenal job of uh, breaking down a lot of the moves so far. I really loved your grades. Uh, so I'm, I'm good. Happy to be here with you guys. Now we're going to fight about it. Ben, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the listeners haven't fled by now to not, uh, <laughs> not a more interesting guest than me. I'll try to, uh, I'll try to fill the shoes of some of the recent guests. You guys are doing a good job. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, let's start it off alphabetically. Atlanta Dream. Let's. What we're going to do is we're going to run through, give our grades. If there's a discrepancy in the grades, like a serious one, uh, we're going to debate it a little bit because that's what we like to do. Um, and if there's not, maybe we'll shine a little light on it. Maybe we'll move on and not uh, bore your ears out. Atlanta Dream, I'm going with the B. Rachel, what grade did you give them? You know, I mean, I, I, I really... I think for me, I, I have to agree. Uh, I might go a little bit higher um, and give kind of a B plus. I think they've got some really good pieces, um, but I really love the addition of Cheyenne Parker. I think that she's really come into this league the last couple of years as a dominant post presence, and that move alone, I think, uh, really borders the B plus A minus category. I mean, I, I think they have to get better um, with the addition of Cheyenne Parker and Tiana Hawkins. I think they're both really big gets. I saw the interior presence as a huge weakness last year. So um, I think, I think they got better. I know the loss of Laney had to have been tough, um, but you still have, you know, dynamic guard play in, in, you know, Courtney Williams. And um, obviously, you know, the, <laughs> a lot of the guards on that roster that, you know, I think have yet to really come into their own there. Um, and I think that that's going to be a lot of fun to watch with Cheyenne Parker. And now you've got that kind of go-to presence inside that can create for the perimeter players. Ben, what do you think? I got a minus. Ooh. I'm, uh, I, got, I guess I'm much rosy. And we got an Odyssey Sims I'm too. Like, I, I forget about that one. There's been so much movement. I apologize, guys. Like It's just hard for me to even keep up with it. But yeah, Odyssey Sims, that's a, that's a huge shot from a veteran presence too. Sorry, Ben. So I, I got to make a big deal about how I like it, like 5% better than you guys. <laughs> I, I, I just think like for them to get to have signed Cheyenne, you know, obviously the, the front court spot, just adding some kind of offensive talent was just such a glaring thing that they needed to do. And your options are so limited if you want to get those players and not knowing a little bit more, you know, how hot in pursuit were they of Laney? I think is interesting, but you know, they didn't, they didn't core her. She could have gone anywhere and they have some other options on the wing here. It's, it makes for an interesting debate if you really want to knock them for that. But I think getting Parker is the big thing. I think Hawkins compared to some of the other bigs in free agency to get her on that contract and just what she does specifically with her skill set, with her shooting at the four, that's going to be a huge help to them. And, and they've added this depth. I mean, really, the one thing I would bring up is just it would have been nice for this 
as this as a as a really good example. You know, some of these teams with the the way they're structured with bigger salaries, they're, you just it, it's really too hard to knock them for carrying eleven players. This is a case where they can still keep twelve. I think it with some of the players they have now, it seems more likely than not that they might be a team that with eleven. So I would have liked if they could have done that. At, at the end of the day, it's not obviously the biggest, the the most important thing in the world for them. But we could be talking like might be like something like twenty thousand dollars where they might be short of being able to do that from the jump. But the the big thing was for them was getting Parker and you know, I kind of graded them on this scale of, are they championship contenders? You know, next year, I don't quite think so, but you know, I can't, my, my frame of mind was the goal for them was to make sure that they're more competitive because they aren't bottoming out with this roster. They've been out of the playoffs for a couple of years. So they've set themselves up to get back in there. And then next off, they haven't done anything that's going to limit them next off season when they have to make some pretty major decisions. Yeah, no, I agree with all that. I mean, I think it's also tough when it comes to grading because I I think often people criticize because they don't necessarily understand where the gradings come from, right? Like everybody decides what the basis for an A is and what the basis for a B is. And I'm sure all three of us have a slightly different one. Um, So it'll be interesting as we continue. I have a feeling we're all going to be semi-similar on the next team, the Chicago Sky uh, who I gave an A to, you know, the the addition of Candace Parker, the addition or the bringing back of a Stu Nadur, uh is, and I probably butchered the name, so my apologies, um, is just great. I mean, y- y- you can't really complain about that. Yes, they lost a different Parker, but they have replaced that position or that fit that hole uh, with two very capable, really good players. So can't knock them really like what they did. And I think one of the things I really like about Chicago was, they were able to make moves to better their team without truly losing important pieces to their team. And, and I'm not saying that to, to knock any players. I'm saying it because they were able to not necessarily take a step back while taking a step forward. And I really respect that and appreciate that. So I gave him an A. Ben, what do you think? I had an A. Getting Candace, you know, kind of similar to the Laney point with Atlanta for Chicago if you know if they wanted to bring back Cheyenne Parker and if you want to if you want to really weigh that factor i think it's interesting because you've got to acknowledge hey if if they somehow did that then one of one of their Candace Azra Stevens and Cheyenne wouldn't be on the court late in games and it's not going to be Candace and you know S- Stevens they ended up signing her to the one year extension which was also a, a great move for them to at least take care of something with that big free agent class that they have next year. But if you're trying to figure out what Stevens can be long-term, I mean, you know, I think that kind of would have been a factor, right? (laughs) Like, you know, good, good players are going to want to be out there, be out there late in games. And maybe it doesn't, you know, maybe it's not the biggest deal in the world to every player. I just think that's, that's an interesting topic. They do still need to, you know, take care of this back, backup point guard thing. But at number eight in the draft, I think chances are they'll have a, a pretty decent option there. And I think having Candace specifically who can facilitate so much, you know, for those two short bursts, whatever it is, when Courtney Vander sits on the on the bench, if, if you've got a healthy diamond to Shields and Candace Parker, who you could possibly put on the floor, I, I think they'll be able to figure those minutes out just fine. I gave Rachel? her a C minus. Um, Ooh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ooh. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Got me for a second there. I was like, "Oh, this is this getting, this is getting juicy." Up, I couldn't keep a straight face. No, I mean it, it's an A for me as well. I mean, just the just the addition of Candace Parker and is, I think probably just solidified that as an A from the start. But when you combine, as as, as Ben brought up, um, you know the uh, extension of Azure Stevens. So you've got some consistency there. You know, for a couple years with with Parker and Stevens and. Um, I'm I'm a little bit concerned about the point guard position, but I think at this point, uh, backup point position, um, it's very clear that you know, with a in my opinion, uh, a fairly point guard heavy draft class, there's going to be options there at that at, at number eight. So I think that's got to be the move, and I agree with it. I think I would um, 
followed it as well. But I think what really what sets this over a to- over the top. I mean, obviously, Candace Parker was huge. Extension of Azra Ray Stevens, great. Um, I think she fits really well um, in Chicago system, and, and Wade is going to get the best out of her. But the Astu deal. I mean, someone made a comment. Forgive me. Twitter world who said that, you know, everyone was playing checkers and James Wade is playing chess. And I, I love that um, comment because I really felt like, you know, you're, you're getting a player that they know that they love and you're getting her for a minimum deal uh, with everything that went down uh, with the buyout in Dallas. And, and so I think a stew um, brings a lot of value to this team that we kind of don't talk about enough. I think she's got a lot of potential that can, um, you know, help this team, you know, even just whether it's 15 minutes a game, I think she's a, adds a lot of depth. So Chicago, Chicago, Chicago's an A. I can't even try and uh, play April Fool's here. It's definitely an A for me. <laughs> I don't want to mm-hmm. knock. I, yeah. I, I wanted to say, I don't want to knock obviously the deal for them, but I got to say like to characterize it as, as chess, it's like, Chicago didn't want to give us do that contract that she got last off season. Yeah. That's why they traded her. So like in a way it's like she fell on their lap is, is, I mean, if we're going to try to characterize it and obviously I'm, I'm, I'm being a little persnickety here, but just she fell on their lap for this to have worked out, you know, it, and it was a big contract last year. I think it's one of the more fascinating stories and we're going to see stuff like this in the off well, season, but you don't have to deal with free. that big contract. And, you know, I, I, I agree. It did right. fall in their lap. I would imagine there, there, that would be way too complex to have had this play out the way it was, but well, you, you know, I, I just thought it was very fascinating. Like it's, that's, that's a, the way, the way it played out, my God, whether it's luck. Okay. But still I huge, huge get for Chicago. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, like end of the day, I, I think it, it's safe to say James Wade didn't think, Hey, we're going to get a stew back next season. Uh, when that move happened last off season, but the way you know that's the way the cookie crumbles, and right now it's a delicious, delicious cookie. <laughs> Connecticut Sun, I gave them a C plus, and my logic basically there was for them there weren't too many, like it, there was pretty obvious moves, right? We know, okay, you want to bring back the Thomases, you want to bring back, you you want to make these moves, blah blah blah. Fine, they brought back all those key players. There are some questions of, you know, the salary cap, the giving out some money that they gave out, uh, which I'm sure Ben will speak to. So I don't want to rain on his parade. Um, but they're, they're one of those teams where like some people, you know, going back to my original point about how we grade, some people might turn to me and say, oh, well, how are you only giving them a C plus because they made the the right moves, whatever it is fine. But for me, there was just there's just something about it. Like I didn't think like for me, if you're getting an A, you had to have knocked this free agency out of the park. I don't think they did. I think they passed. I think they did well. I think they made the right moves, but I don't think they they you know went above and beyond to get that great of a score. Ben, talk to me about the Connecticut Sun. I had a C minus, and if you're calling us, you know, if you're calling a C, in my mind, if I'm gonna you're going to give someone a C, you'd have to be pretty neutral. I agree with that. Just overall to everything that they did, or, you know, maybe the, maybe the things you like and don't like kind of balance each other out. So, so call this a slight negative to me, you know, for one, obviously re-signing your own really good players is important and it, it shouldn't necessarily be overlooked to do it. But when Alyssa Thomas does say, Hey, I wasn't going to go anywhere. And, you know, where they had a huge risk for her to go sign somewhere else with a torn Achilles. So, so it's not as if that that contract has zero risk to it to go for three seasons beyond this one, and to re-sign Jasmine Thomas close to a max contract. Not that Jasmine isn't a clear starter in the league, but the way that you're structured as a team, you have three other max contracts if you re-sign John Paul Jones. So building this team is going to be incre- incredibly difficult. So I don't fault them for that one either, but then you know, getting to the real reality of their situation, a two-year deal for Brianna Jones, a protected salary going into next year, when I think that's the real year for them with AT being out this year, not to get too myopic, but you know, the name of the game is you win a championship. They already locked that in for Jones where I just, I don't think that can be the priority for them. 
the way that they need to build their team when they either need to re-sign beyond January or just get another starting shooting guard. You know, it was it was the the thing I had said in, in my grades was I think they kind of fired the last arrow in their quiver already. And when this team is healthy, they did it for their backup center, who in a playoff game is going to play what? We already saw it in 2019. Play five minutes? You got points. I mean, you're not wrong, Ben. I, I completely agree with everything you're saying, which I think is the issue. Um, and I think most people, I mean, I, I don't know. I have Maybe I haven't done the greatest job of reading the room, but I would say most people kind of overlook that aspect, which is why I commend you uh, for bringing up that aspect of it. Rachel. You know, this thought? is the Connecticut Sun. It's just everything that happened with Alyssa Thomas is really unfortunate and it put them in a really difficult position. Um, I, I do. I think Alyssa Thomas was going to be and was pursued by other teams. So at that point, you know, you have to make the difficult decision. Yeah, you've got to protect some of your most vital assets. So, I mean, that move within itself to, to secure Thomas to a multi-year deal, regardless of the fact that she can't play this year, ultimately has a domino effect of, okay, we're going to have to sit here and play with 10. For me, it's just unfortunate because this – we all know that this Connecticut team um, is extremely talented. We we know that they ha- have to be in the conversation of contenders, um, at least that second or third, fourth level slot almost every year, just because of the way they play with their chip on the shoulder. So, you know, you maintain that core, which I think is extremely important, but you're missing a huge piece in Alyssa Thomas. And you couldn't, you had to resign her for that multi-year year. Other teams were going to come for her. So, you know, I'm a little bit higher on Brianna Jones. I think she is coming into her own I think that um you know there's there's she hasn't peaked yet in terms of what she can bring to this team and the value she brings especially alongside John Paul Jones so you know for me just just real quick so I don't get too long-winded which is too late you know I'll give them a c plus um it's just I agree with a lot of the points you guys are making and the concerns but at the same time um, a lot of unfortunate luck here and limited options on on what you're able to do uh, I mean, I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I just want to wrap up and say like, yeah, they, they are very stuck for the next couple of years. We're already right. seeing it with their signings this off season. You're, you're filling out your roster with training camp contracts, maybe more so in a way that other teams aren't going to have to. And, you know, the only real saving grace again is I'm just circling that shooting guard spot for next year. And it, it just, it, in a way, if they, if maybe someone gets hurt or they just don't do very well this season, maybe their own draft pick shoots up and that can help them a little bit. Maybe if John Quill Jones takes a discount, that gives you some breathing room, but it's not as if she's going to sign for a hundred thousand dollars on a new contract. So it just, I just think they're so limited, but uh, to be clear, I'm not, I'm not knocking them down any rungs because of the, the, the contracts for Thomas and Thomas. That wasn't, That wasn't a part of the negative side of this. Well, I mean, yeah, I I think here's my question for you, Ben, the person who gave them the lowest grade with this. Like, was there other free? Is it strictly the salaries and and the the guaranteed secured, whatever you want to call it? Or do you think that there was better moves they could have made outside of, you know, like signing these players for a different amount? It's just it's just that one move to me to not, you know, push Brianna Jones making a similar salary to Kiovan. It's like, hey, we can't protect this contract. That could be one could have been one option, or you know, if you really if you really wanted to, at least entertain the idea. Hey, we're just gonna roll with Beatrice Montpremier because as our backup center. Because again, we need to, you know, we need to keep our options open. So I don't even know if it's a play it might not have even been a player that they would have signed this season, but again, next off season to sign another shooting guard, or again, to just have more room to re-sign Breon January. I think that's going to yeah, be a gonna major be in concern. The same spot for multiple well, years. Let me, let me translate that for the listeners. Everybody's playing checkers. Ben is playing chess. All right, let's move on to the Dallas wings. The Dallas Wings are an interesting one. I gave them a D, but I was very tempted to give them a C. And the reason I get, I'll explain my my debate, and I'm curious your guys' thoughts on this. Um, 
they only had one free agent. They re-signed him. Leisha Gray, like the move. Great, great job. Uh, and then you have the trade where they trade to get, they trade Katie Lou Samuelson to get the first pick in the draft, which had traveled. Uh, I, ben has a tracker on this. I mean, it traveled more <laughs> miles that day than I have in my life. Um, but my thing is they've stacked up so many draft picks and I know everyone's going to say there's many, there's varying opinions on this for me. I couldn't like, typically I would give them a much better grade for bringing on the first draft pick and for stockpiling all these picks. But my thing is, and if I'm Dallas, my thought process is get as many picks as possible. And then you want to move some of those picks and in exchange, be able to be a top five pick in in like the next however many drafts as possible as you can. Uh, so for me, considering that they've kind of backed themselves into a corner on having so many draft picks where they like literally can't even sign all of them, um, even if they wanted to, unlike last season. For me, that like that's the question of, OK, what's happening here? Could they have made some better moves or maybe not made moves to get another draft pick? I don't know. Let's go to Rachel this one first. I feel then. like there almost needs to be like an asterisk uh, next to it because I feel like there's more to come. <laughs> um, like you said, so many draft picks, it's hard to digest. What do you even do with that? Did at, at this point, um, you know, in the middle of March, did the Dallas Wings get better with everything that's happened in this offseason? I think, I think you could err a little bit on the side of yes. You know, I mean, you have obviously a very young team. You've got a new coach. You know, you've been able to secure that number one pick, whether that goes to Charlie Collier or someone else, um, you know, I think we'll see. Uh, I think a lot of my grade depends on what happens on draft day to kind of see who they add to their roster. But I, I, I agree. I mean, the, the the stockpiling of these picks has always led me to believe, you know, there maybe there's something more headed, you know, late in the game here, uh, a major move. Do I think they've gotten better? Maybe a little bit. Um, slightly, you know, just, just getting rid of a stews, you know, the, the buyout opening up a roster spot was something that was vital for them to do at this point. Thornton's extension, you know, that that's okay. Alicia Gray, the team's one free agent that they had, um, you know, that's, that's great. You have some consistency there. I, I don't know. Long story short, I'll give them a C plus. Ben. I had a C minus. So I guess I'm kind of right in the middle. Again, just a slight negative, you know, just spitballing kind of my prediction or just what I think seems to be the most likely thing that happens here and out for the draft. And obviously, you know, grading the players they end up selecting for all these teams can be part of the offseason overall grade too. But at this point, it seems to me like they're going to, you would use number one, number two, number five, roster those players. And I would, I think at this point, seven the hope is that they can flip that, spin that into a 2022 first round pick, and then For you sure. can worry about that later. So yep. more on what they actually did. Getting the number one pick, I liked it for them, but I don't think Seattle should have done it. So <laughs> I don't know if that, like, I don't, to me, like when you're grading this, I don't think that's something that should catapult their grade. If you really feel that way about it, and maybe people disagree. I liked re-signing Alicia Gray, but they had restricted rights on her. And, you know, without knowing anything about it, what, was she a, a huge risk to go elsewhere? I don't know. I haven't seen any evidence of that. And, you know, one thing, going back to last offseason, where I think they would have been graded much more harshly, is, you know, they didn't behave like a team that has, had all these draft picks on the way. Because you got to leave spots open to actually have more options, you know, if they're shopping number seven right now, because again, there isn't really an, a clear path for them to keep that player. They don't have leverage because of that. You know, if you're really, really trying to ask for something good and I'm on the other side of the phone, it's like, you can't roster this player. So why am I going to give you something good now? Like I'll keep waiting you out and, and maybe someone will come along and they're just, they'll see a chance to draft a player they like and they can still flip that for another pick. But then signing the extension for Thornton, which was reported as a protected contract. I'm back on, I'm back on banging that drum again. It's just, you know, Thornton's been a great find for them, right? Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of pride, you know, kind of a development story, you know, diamond in the rough kind of deal. 
how much is she going to play? How big is she in their plans? Because a team that already doesn't have much flexibility, which is pretty surprising for where they're at, at now that they have a buyout on their books too, eating up, eating up space that, you know, I don't know if they can really be a player next year and maybe it's not realistic, but I'd like to have the option because if I'm sitting in that chair, I'd say, Hey, Arike and Satu are going to be incredible this season. We're going to surprise everyone in the playoffs because they're so good and at least make a little bit of noise. And then, Hey, like maybe you never know, but I, I just, I, I just think not having more maneuverability in general. I, I, I just, I just think that's, uh, I think that's the thing that that's been easy for me to pick at. Uh, I'm going to save us all the, the trouble and tribulation. Indiana fever. Did anybody give them anything other than an F? Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. Let's move on to the Las Vegas Aces then. Gave him an A. I think it's pretty easy and obvious why, you know, yes, you lose Kayla McBride, but you, and I'm not going to say one happened before the other because we don't know how things happen, but they bring on Chelsea Gray, which I am extremely hyped on. They do re-sign Liz Cambage. Uh, They also bring on Raquana Williams, which obviously attends to the need that everyone has discussed of shooting. She is a ridiculously powerful bench piece. This Aces team is stacked, and this is going to probably be the second, third, or at least second out of three years where a lot of people are going to be talking, saying they are the team to beat. They are the championship favorites. We're not going to get into that because I think that's a little bit down the road. But Rachel, thoughts on the Aces? I mean, this is the this is the team, you know, in my opinion right now. Uh, with the consistency that they've had the last couple of years growing this franchise to what it is now, it's just gotten another shot in the arm, in my opinion. Um, Chelsea Gray, I love the fit. I think playing a little bit more in the half court works well with her. Um, it's going to be fun to see that dynamic. Um, you know, Liz Cambage, Asia Wilson, Ch- Chelsea Gray. Um, I mean, the fact that they were able to get Raquana Williams, you know, like for so cheap was even incredible too. I mean, she's, she's it's not fair. I, in my opinion, I'm really high on Raquana Williams. I, I mean, to be able to get that done was extremely impressive. They're just, you know, and then you add the Dierica Hamby extension. I mean, she's the motor behind this team. She's the backbone of this team, in my opinion, is, you know, multiple six, six year women awards. So, I mean, this, they've just, they've just become secure, obviously signing Cam Beige again. I mean, how if if you somehow knock their moves, you're crazy, in my opinion. There's no way. I mean, okay, you lose Kayla McBride. That, that's the big loss, oh, right? But yeah, I think we all can agree that like both parties kind of win in that scenario. It's going to end up working out for for the Aces that that had kind of become stale, in my opinion. And I think it's going to work out with McBride. So I don't think that when it all played out, they're not even the same. They're still better than what they were last year. I agree. Ben? Yeah, Rachel brings up a good point with the McBride piece, right? She was a true unrestricted free agent. So a lot of these situations, when you're trying to grade it, if you don't, you know, when you don't know every single conversation, every single thing that every player was thinking, obviously you can poke some holes in the process. You're just doing the best you can. So that having happened to get Chelsea Gray, and as we found out, you know, went on a visit <laughs> there last year. So maybe there was that, uh, you know, that kind of planted the seed for that. It's it's a really exciting move for them to have someone that can make some plays. They, they obviously valued getting somebody else that can have the ball from the perimeter and do something for us when the shot clock's winding down, when we're playing a set, locked in, really good playoff defense. Someone else to do something for us from out there is really important. I think I think there is a reasonable path for them to kind of pair Gray with Kelsey Plum and to tap into Kelsey's scoring, her shooting, to to make sure that you know she's being utilized and is able to kind of you know flash what she did in the playoffs two years ago. Now, getting the extension for Dierka Hamby on top of it, that's fantastic. Even though it's one year, again, it's just one more thing you're not worried about in the near term here. Going into next year's free agency, possibly could even get an extension done for Asia Wilson. And I only bring that up just because. You know, the, the indications are all so positive for the Aces. Resign Liz Cambage, the, the bargain of a contract for Connor Williams, as you mentioned. Mark Davis has said all the right things so far, going to build him a facility. So even with the ownership change, 
to have that investment. And obviously people want to be players want to be in Las Vegas. We've seen that so far. So just really, really all around a really strong off season for them. Moving on to the LA sparks. I gave them a D minus might be a little harsh and it really, obviously some people can say, well, it's not fair. You're comparing it to them running it back. I agree that that had gotten a little stale, but I will say that the no move that they made excites me. No move that they made makes me go, okay, this team is on the right path. I understand they need to do a reset. I saw in your article, you kind of talked about this, Ben. It has to be taking a play out of the Minnesota Lynx playbook from a few years ago, where you kind of set yourself up, in my mind at least, you're setting yourself up to hopefully if these players play their heart out, you have an all right season, you make the playoffs, you do good. And then the next season, you really start to shift and possibly, hopefully, make some big signings and or draft picks. But as you noted in your article, they have not set themselves up cap wise for the greatest position next season. Rachel, real quick. You know, Ben breaks things down so analytically (laughs) and I have to respect it and I love it. Um, I know it's in my opinion. Yeah, a lot of people think this has been extremely brutally tough free agency for the Sparks. I'm a little more optimistic. I I feel like it's kind of like what you said, Arya. You know, this is kind of like out of the Minnesota Lynx, just re, rebranding, rebuilding phase. Yes, I felt like things had been stale. Had this team remained the same? Yes. Would they be in the conversation of contention as they always are? Yes. Will they? Would they have won a championship? No, in my opinion, absolutely not. Is this team worse than what they were maybe from a talent standpoint sure but you get to rebuild and you got a lot of you get you get to get younger which I think was extremely important it was going to have to happen at some point so being able to kind of embrace that and I like the addition of Erica Wheeler I think that um, that's a hungry player with a chip on her shoulder you know obviously didn't get to talk about a ton last year with her her not playing but I love I love Erica Wheeler in general that that does excite me it's hard for me to say that no move excites me um you know but yeah there's some question marks but I think you have some veteran leadership uh with Tolliver um the Ogumake sisters you know what what can they bring to the table now now everybody's roles get a little bit more defined here so um I am positive about what LA did just because I was ready for such such a change. I was ready for something new, ready for this new era of Sparks basketball. Do I think they're contenders this year? Absolutely not. But do I think they're, they have the potential to be that middle of the pack team that if they can get clicking, could really beat anybody any given night, potentially. So I, I, I see them as a middle of the pack team. I give them a C. Ben? I'm, I'm in the middle again. I was I gave him a D. Slightly, slightly more rosy on them than Arye. I just, they, they kind of locked themselves into a team here, a core of a team for two years. And I just don't know if that was the best pivot for them. I don't, I don't know what the ultimate upside is there to where are, are you maybe talking about being a six seed and hosting a first round game? Okay. I'm not advocating for them to cl- completely blow everything up because especially the WNBA, I understand if that isn't realistic. But to just maintain a little more flexibility when you're really trying to find find an undervalued player at some point, or maybe just sign somebody, you know, for one, I just I wish they had left a little bit more room, even if it was just one of these moves that they made so far, to leave more room for next year. Go try to be a big spender next year. You know, if if you're if you're Los Angeles in all caps and you play at Staples Center and you really see yourselves in that light. I, I just kind of expected they would have taken something that reflected that approach and had that kind of confidence a little bit more. This to me was seemed like a little bit more of a small market kind of approach to an off season where they weren't able to run it back. They went out and signed who was still available. And I, I just, I, I think there would have been better ways for them to try to find some value. Could they have just traded for a stewed do said, Hey, don't buy her out. We'll get that off your books. Give us one of those first round picks that we know you can't use anyway. Is that a way for you to extract some value? Jump in ahead of Indiana, do the Odyssey Sims trade, pick up another first round pick that way. And even with some of these other signings, they have 
signing some wings here and they're going to, are they going to have some versatility? Well, how are they even going to round out this roster? I, I just still have some questions w- with what they're really going to try to build here in the near term. And it just seems like the, the focus was on trying to, on trying to still bounce back and win as much as they could. And I, I think they have a pretty low ceiling on being able to do that. Moving on to the Minnesota Lynx. I give them an A minus. I would have, I, first of all, if you know me, you know I really like that they were able to remove that salary cap hit of Odyssey Sims. Look, having her as a bench piece I think is amazing for any team, but having her at a starter salary with a guaranteed contract, I'm not going to beat that dead horse, but I'm happy they made that move. I really like that. I love them bringing in Kayla McBride. I really like them bringing in Ariel Powers. A uh, big knock that I'm sure we're all going to touch on is Natalie Achanwa. I've spoken about this at length on the podcast. Ben's spoken about it at length in the podcast. In my opinion, they paid her too much. It shouldn't have been a guarantee. And they, I mean, now it's a moot point, but like they should have signed Powers first before uh, signing Achanwa. But that's where they're at. I think this team got much better and is a legitimate contender this season. So for me, that's an A minus team. Rachel. I'm not going to talk for very long because I, I agree with pretty much everything you just said. I, I'm a little bit higher on Achanwa. I, do I think she was paid too much? Yes. Um, but this team got better. I think they got deeper. Um, they got better pieces around their already established pieces. Um, Kayla McBride, I think, will thrive under Cheryl Reeve. Um, Errol. I mean, you know, the, the move of her and Ariel Powers warrants an A, in my opinion. Um, so this team definitely got better. I have to give them an A. Ben? My letter grade ended up being a B, and still a very positive grade, like what they did. And I still think there's a path where all this ends up looking pretty good for them. If Sylvia Fowles continues to play for a few more years and maybe even doesn't demand an absolute max salary, then maybe fretting about kind of the salary cap implications of this offseason, maybe that's all for not. But three years is a long time looking out into the future of what what might be able to come their way. And I don't know. I just I, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I don't know if a B is really all that negative of a grade. And I think they have a chance to go compete at the highest level. If Sill's healthy, I think McBride and Powers were great additions. I think especially with how it'll look with those two next to Nafisa Collier, that'll be fantastic. And 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 we'll see we'll see how it works out just with the workings of their front court rotation and, and really what what might end up being able to happen for them in the next couple off seasons to really maybe make one more move that that could put them over the top. Yeah, I agree. Moving on to the New York Liberty. I gave them a B plus and my logic behind that was I thought what they did was really good. I do have some questions uh, about the salary for Sammy Wickham. I do have some questions of, you know, just I don't even know how to like properly convey what's in my mind on this. I like their moves. I'm not overly blown away. I think this team is infinitely better than they were before, but the real question remains and and maybe this is a bias I have towards teams in the lottery, is did you get into the playoffs? Did these moves during the offseason get you as a playoff team? I know on some episodes I have said yes. On some episodes I have been like, oh, they're definitely competing. I'm back and forth on it, so I can't give them an A. Rachel, real quick, the New York I Liberty. I think they're what one of thinking? the uh, highest winners in this free agency from the lens of the change from last year. <laughs> um, and in my opinion, it mm-hmm. couldn't get mm-hmm. much worse. And it's kind of been that way for a minute in New York. So like aggressive moves, um, really uh, some, some star power that's on this roster. I'll be very curious to see how all this star power fits together. It, you know, whether it's, we're talking about Natasha Howard and Ben Agilani Benagil- under a new system, how those pieces fit. I mean, question marks around Durr and Sabrina, you know, the pieces on this team already, I think, you know, I think it does, it hurts to lose Kia Nurse, um, but I don't think, you know, like in my mind, you know, you, you bring in the addition of Lainey and Sammy Whitcomb and Natasha Howard, and yes, and you lose Nurse and Megan Walker, I think um, if you have to pick between those two, those two groupings, uh, I, I would pick 
uh, exactly what New York did. So I think they're better. I think, you know, are they a contender? Probably not. Uh, but are they up now in the in talks of getting themselves? If, I mean, if this team isn't a playoff team this year, assuming everyone's healthy, even even with Durr out, uh, with with some of the the firepower on this roster now, um, I, th- I think you know you start to really question some other things. But uh, th- this team definitely has talent now. There's no question about that. Now you've got to talk about well, how how did all these pieces fit together? How do we coach them up? But I gave them a grade of an A just from sheer um, the, 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 the jumps that they took from last year and how much better this roster is. Ben? Yeah, I, g- I gave them an A-. I, I, lo- I really like that they went out and got Benajah Laney. I like Natasha Howard as a fit with what they seem to want to do. The number for Sammy Whitcomb ended up being yearly. Uh, similar to what Kevin Pelton had, had uh, uh, put in a piece a long time ago. That that was a funny piece of this. And and getting Sammy, I think, is interesting, especially if going into this season, are we are we going to see Maureen Johannes at all? Or maybe just, you know, not very much. So to go get somebody else at the two, and obviously, hopefully, Asia, Asia Durr is able to make a full recovery before getting to the the basketball side of things for her to, to give him an A minus just, you know, the one thing for me is you just, you want to see how it comes together. How's it going to look with Natasha Howard in, in more of a featured role? We would assume offensively, right? How's that going to look? And in doing so, are, are you still going to, you know, maintain that level to be a defensive player of the year kind of difference maker, which I think they, they are going to need. And I think they still do kind of have to figure out, right? You know, who's who's Natasha's partner going to be in the front court long term? I think that'll still be something to address, although they do have interesting options for now. So I'm not, and I wasn't even too worried in in, in accounting how it kind of adds up for them. I, I agree that you know they should enter the season wanting to make the playoffs, ha- seeing how it breaks, especially needing to lean on some young players still. We'll see how it goes, but but I, I still come out on the positive side, regardless of how it goes. Just because now they can also enter next off season as having really made this statement that we went out and got some good players. They chose to be here, and obviously it's New York. <laughs> I'm not going to completely ignore that, but they they can also really you know go out and spend next off season and, and try to make another big splash. Yeah, I like it. Now, Rachel had to leave us right when it got juicy because she knew what I was going to finish this episode with. So for the last three teams, it's just going to be you, me, you and me, Ben, (laughs) you, me and Ben. Uh, (laughs) Let's talk about the Phoenix Mercury. Honestly, I'm real hyped about their moves. This is a team that, and I'm actually curious for your opinion on this. So uh, we'll see if you push back against my thoughts, but this is a team that I thought lacked a little bit of veteran presence when it came to the depth. And I think they were in a tough situation where they have, you know, Alana Smith, Sophie Cunningham, these young players, and they also had Shatori Walker Kimbrough. Um, I think it was one of those situations where I really like the move of bringing on Kia Nurse and, and replacing some of that, but also adding on a Megan Walker who has a ton of upside. So I'm really high on this team. The reason I couldn't give them an A was I didn't think that. You know, I don't think they needed to make these giant moves. This is already a pretty good team. But the question that I have or the the the, the aspect of it uh, that maybe left a sour mouth in my in my or a sour taste in my mouth was also just this whole, you know, the rumors around Brittany Griner possibly wanting out of Phoenix and all that jazz. And I understand that can't technically be part of my grade and if it was fully part of my grade I might even bump them down to a regular B or a B minus but I really like the moves that they made and I think they added an element of depth that maybe wasn't there last year what are your thoughts Matt yeah I, I gave him a B a straight B you know liking really the you know the one primary move that they made I'm I'm not there to really factor anything with BG into this unless we hear heard more from her directly, and you know still under contract for two more years, has a you know a long history with Diana Taurasi there in Phoenix. So 
for me, you know, the, the big move for them of trading two first round picks for Kia Nurse and Megan Walker, it clearly carries some risk for them because you've got Kia Nurse about to become a free agent next off season. And they're going to be pretty limited in what they might be able to offer her with what they have on the books right now. Now, obviously that's something they took into account. And obviously on one hand, you can say, right, well, hey, if we win it all this year, you know, you know, the, the, the banner flies forever, right? Yeah. So I totally see that part of it. And I couldn't drag them down too far with that risk because it, it was tough to balance. On one hand, if the regular season, not if they totally bottom out, but if it doesn't quite go as they planned and that pick that you sent out ends up being maybe in that range it was this year in the six range, that might be a tough thing to lose out on. But the you know the Mercury in general they're they're in this position that no one plans to be in right. You you, you talk about teams that are resetting, they're rebuilding, they're trying to add that one more big piece in free agency. Well, Phoenix has just been doing this year after year after year. They're trying to keep winning with Tarasi still playing towards the end here, trying to you know make the most of limited resources, and it's a really tough spot to be in for so many years in a row. So to kind of address something at the wing position, get someone that can make shots and defend, you know, Kia Nurse will help them a lot in transition too. Kia Nurse is very fast, <laughs> which, uh, you know, that'll be, that'll be fun too, to see those guards, you know, get, getting hurt out in transition. I like the move for them. I, I like grading it out as a positive while just still acknowledging some of the slight risk to what they've taken on here, like that they re-signed Kievan to as, as one of the, the few decisions they can make with what they have. So we'll see it. We'll, we'll see how this goes in the end, but you know, they, they really, you know, they really should feel good about acquiring nurse because if you're in a position where you need a player with that skill set and you can only trade for someone on a small contract, your options are already so limited. And, you know, if those players are good and on a small salary, a team isn't going to want to just give them away. So, you know, those constraints are kind of the way they were kind of framing what they wanted to do. It's a very tough spot to be in. And, and, and with what they ended up getting in the end, uh, they should feel pretty good about it and how they can how they can come together. Yeah, very well spoken, Ben. Let's move on to the Seattle Storm, the defending champions. Uh, interesting offseason for them. They lose Sammy Wickham. They lose Alicia Clark. They lose Natasha Howard. And going into it, you know, kind of somewhat similar to a degree to LA where, you know, going into this off season, there was three big names from this roster. Maybe you could argue Sammy isn't on that same level. Fine. Sue me, whatever. But, you know, now we're sitting here looking back. They don't have any of those players on the roster anymore. Alicia Clark and Natasha Howard are ridiculously key pieces to both of their recent championship runs. I gave them a D. And the reason I gave them a D was because what I saw was them lose a lot of talent, lose a lot of integral parts of their team, and not truly bring back replacement pieces that, at least from where I'm sitting, and and maybe this is a little bit biased, but from where I'm sitting, they did not help their chances. And now, you know, to win a championship is the name of the game. Ultimately... When you're looking at this, it's really hard to do that, right? So I don't think it would be fair if I was just grading them on saying they won the championship last year. And if they don't, you know, make moves to stay on that same competition level, then it's a failure. But there still has to be that element of this team is not as good as the team was last year, uh, even though they were the championship team. And you talk about, you know, some of the moves that they made. You know, I know in your article you spoke about that. And we've talked about in this pod, a lot of teams have kind of screwed themselves, for lack of a better term, or tied themselves uh, down the river in regards to signing on contracts that are going to have bad effects on their salary cap in the coming years. Seattle's not one of those teams, as you pointed out in your article. But I also, I'm left kind of head scratching with the quick turnaround of that first overall pick that they got in the Natasha Howard trade. So lots of lots of question marks there. Uh, I give them the D just because I, you know, it wasn't like a complacency thing for me. They did a little worse than complacency. What were your thoughts on the Seattle storm? I had the same grade 
And really the big, the, the primary negative factor was just not liking the decision to trade the number one pick. And as I've, as I've said, you know, to, to go get Kiki Herbert Harrigan and Katie Lou Samuelson, are both of those players going to be a huge part of their future plans? Because at least for this next year, they also signed, signed Candace Dupree. So I don't think she's going to just sit on the bench for them. And you got to give those two players minutes to develop them. You know, they haven't been high minutes players in the league yet. So, you know, one of my critiques was just, you know, could on top of just maybe trying to make a bigger trade with Dallas where you maybe you get the number five pick back. I mean, get something else back. I, I just don't think that was a balanced trade. Or just pick one of those players that you like more and try to trade that Phoenix pick for them and, and try to use this number one pick where I think there still could have been some appealing options for them. And, you know, one thing that's funny to me, so this is almost a sidebar about Seattle's offseason. This team just won the championship the last two times that they were healthy. And if this were, you know, if this league were covered like the NBA, imagine like this is a story, right? Like that team or, you know, just pieces of it, they chose, they decided that they didn't want to, you know, try to run it back again. And it's just, it's also funny reflecting on an off season where, you know, you think about if this were the NBA and everyone would be buzzing and wondering and demanding, why don't we know more about why this happened the way that it did, that two of those starters chose to go elsewhere. Right. I just think that's a, and again, as I've said with some of the other teams, I'm not without knowing so much more and not being able to ask more questions and get direct answers. I it's tough to knock them just because Alicia Clark and Natasha Howard are out the door. Uh, again, I just didn't like the decision to trade number one, but that was that's also something that that's just come to mind for me. It's just it, it, it's it's kind of amazing, right? Just you know, this this is like a story and for such a long off season it's just something that are we gonna are we gonna get any more about this i i sure would love to read that you know that ten thousand word story hey you're you're pitching to the choir here um I, I i will add to that and say a really interesting aspect of it is you know when when the move happened i i very vocally tweeted this out and said it on the podcast it was natasha howard and alicia clark leaving just two moves very easily single-handedly completely not only changed the you know the power structure of this league but evened it out a lot more to your point of the last two seasons these, this team was healthy they I'm, I'm not going to say easily won the championship but easily won the championship in sweeps um and so to sit here and go you know wow going into the offseason if you went with the assumption that they do sign back Alicia Clark they do sign back Natasha Howard, and maybe they're able to send, sign Sammy Wickham. I don't think it would be a crazy claim for most people to sit here and go, yeah, Sue Bird's older, but Mercedes Russell is also, Jordan Canada is also, uh, Brianna Stewart is also, Jewel Lloyd is also, and this team had great opportunity to win three rings in four years and three rings with three healthy rosters, obviously, if they stayed healthy. So I just think it, it was... You know, the the fan in me who just wants competitive, high intensity parity in the league is overly excited. The person who wants to see one of the most dominating teams and to go on a run that we haven't seen uh, in a very long time since the likes of, you know, maybe the Minnesota Lynx. But you could even make an argument that more so even the Houston Comets um, would have been extremely exciting to be part of and see in front of our own very eyes. Any final thoughts on the storm? No, I think we covered it. Sweet. Moving on to the Washington mystics. I know we're going to be a little bit off on this one. Um, I'll let you go first. Oh, putting the onus on me. All right. I gave him an A. So looking at what they had going into this, I think you had to absolutely had to have kind of come to the realization that, or just kind of understand that they might be bracing for possibly losing somebody walking out as an unrestricted free agent, just because uh, of the challenge of trying to fit everyone under the salary cap and what may have happened. Would, would are you with me on that? Just yeah. that, that as a premise. So yeah. if you take that 
approach or that thought going into the off season. And then you realize they did lose Ariel powers, a name that right. A lot of people circled as one of those players that might get targeted rightfully so by other teams, but then they still signed Alicia Clark. And that was obviously a surprise that, that Clark was even looking to go elsewhere. Now, looking at how they kind of rebound as a team, you you know, you did, you do lose a certain element of having someone like Ariel Powers, which we mentioned, a really a pretty, you know, pretty tough uh, skill set to replicate by signing somebody else. But they brought back Natasha Cloud, who's going to give them that much needed dribble penetration to collapse the defense. And Natasha's also really improved as a scorer, as a shooting threat. And in adding Clark to play next to Ariel Atkins, it's a it's going to be a different look, not having somebody like Powers instead, but the way they'll be able to stretch you with their shooting and what those two players can give them on defense. At the end of the day, you're still throwing the ball to Elena Deladon in space, pitching it into Tina Charles in space, and to me also using Tina in some ways that I think are going to be really tough to stop. In addition to just having her play on the low block, they got the extension done for Ariel Atkins. So they have some stability moving into the future and they seem to have pulled and they've pulled this off while still preserving room for Emma Mieseman. If she's going to come over at the end of the season and as constructed, I think they're built pretty well to to hold to to take care of business while she's gone and then if they can plug her in late in the season and in the playoffs that'll work out pretty great for them too so i i just i really struggle to to pick at something that they ultimately ended up doing yeah like i gave him a b and i hear everything you're saying and and i'll just kind of bullet point my concerns of why I couldn't give them an A. Um, and, you know, some of them are legitimate, some of them aren't. A non-legitimate one, I would say, for why I didn't give them necessarily a B plus was the Natasha Cloud re-signing and, and how dragged out that was. And I know what the response is going to be. I'll play my own devil's advocate, but they signed her. Why does that matter? They still have room for Emma. Just something about that. Not It obviously, like, we can tell by reports coming out by a reporter who clearly was getting information from the team side and, and reports coming out from a different reporter who is clearly getting information from the player side. There was obviously a lot of tension um, sitting in, in hearing some of the back and forth. It just didn't seem great to me. Yes. It's, it's a multi-year deal. So obviously they have, you know, reconciled to a degree and are happy enough to, to move forward and do that. But obviously it's not a perfect situation. Um, so I give it, you know, a uh, probably undeserving lack of a B plus on that. The other concern that I have is Emma Mieseman, the situation with that. She's not currently on roster. I'm not going, I'm, I'm grading on the fact. Yes, I'm well aware that everyone is going to say, but we know she's going to come back if she's coming back. She's going to the mystics. Um, she has not decided about this year yet. There was a whole debacle, uh, on clubhouse where Natasha, Cloud mentioned that Emma Meesman won't be joining uh, the team for the season. Then Emma came out uh, with a tweet uh, pretty upset at media members for running with that and stating that she has not decided yet. So a little bit of a uh, lack of clarity of what's going on there as as to be expected because, you know, players are people too. Athletes are people too, and they need to make their own decisions. Um, but she's not signed right now. So that's that's a key free agent, a key piece of their team, right? Everyone talked about how important she was for them to win a championship when they did. Um, and now they don't have her currently on roster. Another thing that I'm knocking. Right, well, let's, and, let me yeah. let's say on Misman though, the, this, this is what should have happened though. It, like Washington shouldn't, you know, they can't do all these moves and then also pay Emma max salary or close to it. They don't have enough room. And if if Emma isn't going to come over until later, anyways, then this then this was the perfect solution to just get it done. Because if she were going to go sign with somebody else, I think she would have done it by now. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure teams would have paid her. So I, I think that piece. Of, I mean, frankly, I think like the circumstance 
obviously it's not a case where like Emma's injured or that they're just strong arming her. You know, she wants, she's, she's taking part in her Belgian national team responsibilities this summer. This broke perfectly for the mystics. I mean, they, they, they could still sign and make all the moves that they did. And then they can still bring her on late in the season. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I agree with that. I just can't like, until I hear something where the mystics say, you know, we expect her back or the, and, and again, a lot of my issues, I think there's, there's holes in it and there's legitimate concerns and legitimate, you know, responses saying, Arya, you're crazy. You're wrong. You have a bias against the mystics. I, I get that. People will say that. And I completely understand that. I get that. Uh, these are just things that, you know, rub me the wrong way and make me say, okay, I can't give them a better grade. Again, like like you said before, when we were, I forgot what we were talking about, the links, you know, and not to make this a Minnesota thing, but like, as you said before, B is not a bad grade. For me to get an A, you have to be knocking it out of the park. And I understand based off of kind of the way you're describing the Emma, and I completely agree with you with the pivot on Powers to Clark. On the same page there. But there's still an element where, like, if there's enough things that irk me the wrong way, I can't give them an A. And, and that's just my own, you know, my own grading system. Uh, another thing that kind of irked me the wrong way, and again, this is without being knowledgeable on the topic, just based off of the public information, um, is the Latoya Pringle Sanders. Um, her signing and then her retiring, what, like a week later, uh, in my mind, makes it pretty obvious i'm reading between the lines i'm assuming things so maybe i'm making an ass out of myself call me out ben if i am but it seems to be that there was a situation where she did want to play and then the team maybe went to her and said hey look sorry we gotta save this money for emma we gotta use this money to bring back natasha because you know she wants more money and you know hey go get your bag do your thing i'm just speaking from a third person aerial perspective um pun intended uh and then she goes and retires because it seems like maybe there's a situation of them saying hey we we might have to cut you to make room but if you want to stick around we can put you on us on our team as a i forget what it was like film person front office position whatever it was so i like that they're doing right by her in that regard um, but but those moves and then and then the real question that I have, assuming that Emma doesn't come over at all this season and she or she doesn't sign with the Mystics, whichever it is, um, I do have some concerns of the depth of this team. Looking at it, Maisha Hines Allen, obviously very high on her. Leilani Mitchell, I, I have my ups and downs on her. But besides that, I mean, who else, if I'm an opposing team, am I going to look at and be concerned about on this roster? And, and like, is depth not a concern at all for you because they have Leilani and because they have Maisha? Or, like, where is your mind as somebody who is a fan of what they did this offseason? And, again, I'm a fan, just not an A fan. Um, what what was your thoughts on the depth of this team? I, I mean, you can't, you can't have everything. I guess, like, what would you want? What would you want bench player X to do? what things do you need from someone on the, on the court that they aren't going to get to have Leilani as a backup point guard? I think Stella Johnson and Kira Leslie will make open shots. And I think Leslie especially has some potential to, you know, show a little bit more as a defender and, you know, to only have Heinz Allen, if, if that's like a knock again, that's quite a stretch. I mean, someone that can score, do a lot with the ball in her hands and, and, you know, might even look even better this season just because she'll be playing with more talent around her to make the, the decisions for defenses even more difficult. I mean, I think there's still going to be, you know, with, with their spacing, with some of the, the uh, continuity that they're still going to have, I think they're still going to be one of the toughest teams to, to plan for. All right. I'll, I'll give you that. I mean, for me again, and, and this is to a fault. I often, you know, I look at when the team, because this has a similar makeup, right? They still have a lot of these key players from their championship run. And I know I keep bringing this up, so you probably hate me for this. Um, the comparison to that 2019 season, that 2019 team, and just the depth that I saw in that team of having, you know, Powers, Hawkins. Heck, they had Maisha and they rarely ever used her. They had Emma coming off the bench, or maybe they had... uh 
Latoya coming off the bench, whatever it was, they had those elements at, at the varying different positions. So when we saw uh, Christy Tolliver go down with an injury late in the season and miss, I want to say nine games going into the playoffs, something like that. Um, they had that ability to have a player who could be a starter on a different team or heck even on their team, if they wanted to step in easily and assume the position as a starter. That's what my concern is when it comes to it. Like if we're talking about depth in the sense of in a game, no injuries, everyone's healthy. We need to give this player some rest, you know, get some run in for some other people completely agree with you completely agree with you. My concern is much more if there's an injury being able to plug people in, um, that's that's where my my you know dropping them from an A to a B right and again not a huge difference. Uh, do you want to tell me why I'm an idiot for that or should we move on to the last thing before we sign off for today? Yeah, let's get to the last one. I would just say I think that's also old CBA, new CBA. Go through a cycle of two to three years, and all have said good players on a good team. Someone's probably going to get poached because they're going to get paid. So I also, that example of that 19 team might not really be possible unless unless two or even three of those players are still on their rookie contracts. But then they're going to come off of those contracts and, and then you, you probably can't keep that together for that long. Yeah, I hear you. All right. Uh, you have to pick one team, the losers of free agency. And I'm giving you a caveat. It cannot be the Indiana Fever. You can go first or you can pass to me to go first and then you'll go. I'll say on the fever, by the way, since it came out today, they, they signed Kelsey Mistral to a contract extension. So that's that's a positive bit of news for them that has True. been factored in. And obviously we've talked about them previously and maybe we can get more into them later since we didn't today. If I got to pick one, I, w- I would just say Seattle because just in general, even if it's not ascribed to a grade, you won the championship and, and you lost two of your starters in free agency. So that part of it's disappointing. And again, as I covered, I just I didn't like the decision from them for, for what they did to have moved on from the number one overall pick. Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, I'm going to take a slightly different. I, I was actually going to say Seattle, but because you did, I'm going to pick a different team. I'm going to go with the wings, uh, you know, for for the reasons that we talked about. I, I just can't get on board with this. Because I think a lot of it has to do with I'm still anticipating another foot to drop, right? Another few moves. But the longer this goes on, they kind of back themselves into a wall where it's more and more clear, like you were talking about with that seventh pick. And in those situations, you start to slowly lose the upper hand in possible trade talks. Winners, uh, Winner of free agency, you have to pick one team or you can pass it to me and I'll go first. Totally up to you. Just one, huh? Yeah. Las Vegas, Cambage has re-signed. That part of it's done. They got Chelsea Gray, the Raquana Williams piece. The, this this can be a, a, a very special season for them. Again, you picked the one I was going to pick. But luckily, I had a great backup in the Chicago sky. And a lot of people are going to look at me and say, oh, well, just because they signed Candace. It's about Candace. But it's also their ability to then get a stew. Uh, I just think... Look, whether it fell into their lap or James Wade somehow predicted that this was going to happen, I just really like the moves. And I think this team is not, it, it's going to be hard for any other team when you look at Las Vegas's roster for any other team to sit there and say, we are the favorites. But what, once we remove Vegas from the equation, I don't think it's a crazy idea to say Chicago's right up there with them. So I think it's going to be an interesting season. It's going to be an exciting one. The Chicago Sky definitely, in my mind, won free agency. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will be back and remind you that Winsider is a one-stop shop for all your WNBA news and conversation. We can't do it without your help. Become a subscriber at patreon.com backslash Winsider, and we'll be back with great interviews, conversation, and debates on the next episode of The Winsider Show.